and welcome everybody to a new show. This is, of course, a 3P Gamecast, uh, formerly known as the Rogue and Ranger Gamecast. Uh, mm-hmm. I am, of course, the Texas gentleman Tanner Pruitt, and uh, with me here is not only the one, the only Mr. Stephen Grudy, uh, but Hello. also our hi Stephen, but <laughs> also our good friend uh, Mike Charlip. Uh, uh, you may know us here from Headlock Talk, uh, if you are listeners of uh, Headlock Talk Wrestling Podcast. Uh, Mike is a, a good friend of ours, and um, not too long ago we did retire the Rogue and Ranger Gamecast uh, from the Headlock Talk uh, radio lore. Um, yeah. <laughs> but, but with a little bit of help from our good friend Mike, uh, we have now risen it from the ashes and are, uh, are going to try this out here on YouTube, where you can see all three of us, right here. Look, wave to the camera, everybody. Oh, look, there, there is us. <laughs> um, so, yes, uh, I'm Tanner. We'll kind of go on the round. Phoenix. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll kind of go on the round here and introduce ourselves. I'm Tanner, of course. Uh, to um, my left uh, on the screen here is the one, the only Mr. Stephen Grudy. Stephen, say a little bit about yourself. Hello. Hello, hello. Yeah, you guys, <laughs> you guys probably know me from Headlock Talk with Tanner. Uh, you know, we we were doing Rogan Ranger and just wasn't clicking as well as we thought it would. Uh, and so we brought Mike on here uh, to to have a little bit of fun with us. But yeah, mm. I, I mean, you probably already know me from Rogan Ranger, but uh, if you don't, I'm Steven. I play a lot of games, pretty mm. much all I do at, at this point. So <laughs> uh, figured I wanted to sit down and, and talk with some good friends of ours to. Uh, yeah, talk some games. Sweet. Sweet. That's what we're here for, to talk about games. Uh, and, uh, and of course, uh, player three here, uh, our good friend, Mike Charlip. How are you doing, Mike? I'm doing pretty good. I'm uh, happy to be here. I'm happy to be uh, doing this with you guys. Yeah. Pretty uh, exci- excited about it. It's a fun well, We're happy project. to have you, man. Yeah, we're, we're yeah. very happy to have you, and we're very happy to have you guys, the viewers and listeners out there, uh, to tune in. Uh, so this is going to be a lot of fun. You uh, you obviously can see us here on YouTube, but we will also have a podcast version of the same exact show. So have no fear. Uh, that's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, with that being said, um, let's kind of get into some uh, some stuff here, Stephen. You, you've got some, yeah. some news for us this week. Yeah, yeah. So, uh First up, uh, we're going to be talking about uh, just some game launches that are coming out soon. Um, we have Star Wars Squadrons that is actually coming out today, the today of this recording. This is uh, October 3rd. Uh, this yes. will probably go out when? Next, next Wednesday on the 7th. Uh, so the game will already be out by the time that you guys are here in this podcast. But just wanted to let y'all know about it if you hadn't heard. Uh, it's... Uh, Kind of like a dog fighting space combat type game. Uh, I don't oh. know if you, either of y'all have heard of it. I got uh, worried. Um, I got, re- got really. He, I, he got really concerned when you said dog fighting. I was like, "There's <laughs> no way they're going to sanction this. This is impossible." Yeah, man, a Star Wars dog fighting game. Yeah. I don't even know what a, a dog from the no. Star Wars universe would look like. Yeah, it'd be like uh, like Darth Vader would like have a Rottweiler, and he'd be like, "All right, get him." <laughs> Yeah, and, and the dog has like the the sound too. The yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so Star Wars Squadrons uh, comes out today, and then uh, next week on Wednesday, actually the day that this show will be going up on October seventh, is FIFA twenty one. FIFA twenty one. Yeah, you know, I just started playing FIFA twenty, and I, I'm really enjoying it personally. But someone who will know a little bit more about FIFA twenty one is our good friend Tanner. Um, are you excited for this game? Um, let's see. It is it, it, am I excited? Uh, is is water wet? Do we, do we breathe air? <laughs> uh, yes, I'm. I'm very excited. Um, they've they've done a lot actually. Um, surprisingly, to to renovate FIFA. Uh, this mm. go around here, um, it's been criticized for um, a while now. Uh, that uh, they rarely do anything to kind of renovate FIFA in the same way that they do with Madden. Um, so EA kind of went out of their way uh, to make some changes. Uh, I think for the best. Uh, this time around. Um, so they're adding a lot of different uh, features here to uh, manager mode. Um, 
if you're familiar with a, a game called Football Manager, which is widely lauded on PC, uh, what they're doing is they're uh, they're they're putting in like a sim mode where it looks like you know it's it's just like an overview of the pitch with um, like different icons moving around, um, oh, okay. and you can yeah, and you can kind of jump in and out of the game and 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 kind of like stop the game at key parts if you're going to simulate a match, and you can jump right in and do like a take a penalty or get into the middle of a play or um, to take a free kick, that kind of thing. So it seems as though it helps accelerate the amount of time that you would spend playing in a game normally, especially if it's uh, if you're in a matchup in career mode that you particularly don't care about. Um, yeah, that's that's kind of what they're doing with Madden now. Mm -hmm. If you're playing like fr franchise mode, for example, like they have a feature where like instead of playing the whole game, you can play the moments. Yep. Like mm -hmm. if, if something happens like, oh, well, it's you know, uh, you're in the red zone, so mm -hmm. do you want to take control? Or, mm -hmm. oh, it's a, it's a close game with two minutes left. You you know, like, the same thing. Yeah. That, that's pretty cool, because I, I was, yeah. uh, like I said, I had been starting to play FIFA, and I'm mostly enjoying the, the player career mode a little bit more, because I, I really enjoy actually uh, you know, playing the game on the pitch. Um, the, the manager mode is cool for me, but I feel like I don't play the game enough in, in that mode. So this edition mm -hmm. right there sounds really cool. It, it does help out, especially, like I said, if, you, if you're playing through uh, manager mode and you're wanting to just kind of bypass a few things, but you know for sure that you want to win a particular match, right? Like if you're, right, right. If you're, if you're down you know, 2-1 and you want to tie the game, obviously you can get into a key parts of the game to where you can actually tie up the game. So um, mm -hmm. with, with that being said, there, there are some other features that they added in as far as like uh, transfers and buying players uh, whenever you're in uh, manager mode, uh, but also you're given the capability of changing player positions, um, which they made a big deal about. Um, that's been something that's been widely asked for for a long time now is the ability to change mm -hmm. player positions. Uh, so if I had somebody in a position that's a, a right back and I wanted to convert them into a um, central midfielder, I could do that easily and then skill up the player based on that position now. Um, nice. nice. So yeah, um, they're keeping a lot of the bones for FIFA Ultimate Team relatively the same. A lot of the online plays going to be uh, just as good, if not the same as what it was once before uh, or even better. Uh, so yeah, there's really no complaints to be had about that particular um, uh, those particular features. So a lot of good uh, renovations, particularly around um, uh, manager mode uh, in particular. Mm -hmm. uh, the demo's been good. Um, I'm I'm really really uh, excited to get my hands on it because I did pre-order it, and I guess I'll be giving you guys a little bit more of a review more in depth later once I can, like I said, get my paws on it. Yeah, for sure. No, I, like I said, I'm I'm pretty excited for the game. Uh, th this is like the first FIFA that I, I'm actually excited about. You know, uh, mo most of them they for me they just come and go because I'm not a football fan, but now I am. Uh, and and one of the the biggest features that I'm excited about is the the precise uh, dribbling that, like system that they had talked about. It looks really cool. It, it looks really really cool. Uh, but but like I said, or like you said, uh, as soon as you're able to get your paws on it, we'll have a, a kind of a meatier, a lengthier review for you guys on that. Yeah, exactly. I mean, um, one thing that EA's done that's really annoyed me in the past is that they have. Um, made a lot of frequent change up as far as the controls are concerned and as far as like um you know how how you take a penalty and how you take a free kick and i'm hoping that those stay relatively the same or at least they uh dumb down that feature uh perhaps mm -hmm. and maybe keep it more consistent going forward that's kind of been the thing with ea especially the sports games is that they try to change something so that it's not monotonous every time you get a game because like i get mad in every single year Mm -hmm. And every single year, it's kind of exactly the same, except for, like, some new feature that they added when you're actually playing or, you know, whatever it is. But they, they try to spice it up somehow, put in a new feature or a new game mode or something to make it interesting, because then you're just getting the same game every year, and nobody wants that. Right, mm -hmm. right, for sure. All right. Well, so. uh, from there, uh, we're, we're going to talk about some other other things here. We have some things coming up uh, talking about PS5, uh, all of the, the launch lineup and the details coming from that, as well as the Xbox Series X slash S and all the details and launch lineup. But before we do that, what are we playing, guys? What are we playing? We're all gamers here. 
play a lot of games, obviously. Uh, we'll, we'll start with Mike. Uh, what are you playing, man? I mean, for the most part right now, all I'm playing is is Madden. Like, I'm really into Ultimate Team, so that's really all I've been playing is Ultimate Team. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm really into that, like, the whole, like, collecting aspect of it and doing the challenges and just getting my team better and and once in a while, like, facing people online because you have to to get certain, you know, uh, tasks done and mm, certain right. things. But, like, there is, like, a problem with... I mean, the launch of Madden was actually like regarded as one of the worst uh like mm. launch games in a while because like at release like there was a lot of bugs and usually madden doesn't have those yeah uh but that's become like the norm now with games where they release the game usually the same time of year no matter how many bugs there are and then just fix it going forward yep You're, or sometimes you know, not <laughs> or or sometimes not but uh but yeah i've been playing that for the most part and i've also been playing a lot of among us oh among yeah yeah because it's just so much fun it's kind of it's kind of addicting in a way because like you don't get anything for playing among us mm -hmm. you know it, there's no like there's no moving forward in among us you just play the same game mm -hmm. over and over and over again with up to 10 people and you just gotta find out who the imposter is who's killing everybody and it's a lot of fun um i mean i wish i could play it like on a stream or something where we could actually talk to people while playing it because i've been playing mm. it on mobile and right. playing it on playing it on mobile and texting is very it's very hard to be like explain what i saw or what i didn't see or what i was doing in the mm -hmm. process of playing the game and being like oh i think blue did it because they were being really weird and you have to type that like, yeah <laughs> you know like, you can't really get the same like inflection through through text yeah yeah but yeah but it's a really fun game i i enjoy i enjoy it both ways i enjoy i enjoy being the imposter because it's fun to like actually like go around and like mess with people while you're you know like you're supposed to be doing the tasks and shit and right it it like, just the other day I was playing it, and I was playing a two-imposter game with ten people, and me and the other imposter got two stack kills at the same exact time, and it was perfectly done to the point where nobody got suspected. Oh, wow. And <laughs> it was amazing. Yeah. Like, they they were like, that was so cool, I've never seen, like, people in the chat were like, I've never seen that happen before. Yeah. And, and didn't, didn't know that it could be done. <laughs> but... But yeah, it was like five people trying to fix the same problem, and me and the other other imposter both got a kill at the same time, and they couldn't figure out who did it. That's funny. <laughs> I didn't even know there were multiple imposters. I thought it was just well, the one. You can play up to three imposters. Most, oh, okay. Most people, it, it really depends on the number of people you have, mm. because the number of people you have, like, if you have five people playing you should only have one imposter because once you get down to one person alive, the game is over. But right, if, right. if you have at least eight or more, you should probably have two because, you know, it it, it makes it more like, oh, there's only one imposter, so we just got to find out who that one imposter is in the game. Is right. Over. Yeah, but yeah. It's actually a lot more fun with two imposters. Because... Yeah, that can sow, like, a, a lot more chaos in the, in the match, yeah. too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And like I've been watching people stream it, and it's it's just a really fun game. I, I enjoy it a lot. Yeah, well, well nice. right on, man. Uh, the, you you had mentioned Madden Ultimate Team. I'm just curious, is that like pretty much the same as FIFA Ultimate Team, like where you're collecting it, it, players and stuff? Or yeah, it's it's the same thing. You're opening packs. You're, okay. Yeah, you're doing challenges, and I'm actually doing pretty well for the most part. Nice. Um, I think I got like an overall 87 team, so. I think I'm doing okay. Well, sounds pretty good to me. I who, mean, most who of do you have on your roster? Uh, well, I actually have been doing very well with like getting like upgrades and uh, you know, like uh, the ones that like involve training points and stuff. Oh, like okay. I have a full, like I have a fully maxed out uh, Bo Jackson. Um, I got nice. a fully maxed. Uh, I mean, I don't think it's completely maxed out, but it's it's at least a ninety uh, Tavares. Uh, Tavares. Um, Lamar Jackson. 
Mm. I don't know why I almost said Tavares Jackson. But, uh, I don't know. <laughs> that sounds like a Key and Peele skit. <laughs> no, he was actually he was actually also a football player. He's just no longer okay. in the league. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. But um, I got uh, they there's certain people like in the game like that you have to do certain tasks to upgrade. Like they have a it's called a Mutt Master Madden Ultimate Team Master. Okay. And every every I was like every, wait <laughs> yeah. Every year they have one, and you have to do a certain amount of tasks. And this year, the the Mutt Master was like an old linebacker from the '90s named Sam Mills, mm. and I almost got him completely maxed out. Uh, to like he's at a 93 right now, and I only have two tasks left. So that's but, not uh, bad. But yeah, like I've been I've been doing pretty well about like collecting and like doing some of the sets and getting more people and. And this is, like, the first year that I've been, like, super serious about it, because usually there's a wrestling game coming out at the end of this month. So Madden yeah. just, Madden goes to the wayside, and I play that wrestling game. Mm-hmm. But that's not happening this year. So, because yeah. I ain't getting that Battlegrounds crap. Nope. Nope. <laughs> Absolutely not. I, I've heard so. I've heard good things, uh, but no, me yeah. neither. <laughs> no, it's, it's it's not a it's not a sim. It's like an arcade. Right, game. right. It's an arcade. Like, it's not, I've heard like, it's like a crappy All Stars. Yeah, mm. that's what it is. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a crappier All Stars where everybody kind of looks like a instead of looking all steroided up like in All Stars, mm. they just they look kind of blocky with like smaller bodies and and smaller bodies and bigger heads. Yeah, yeah, and, it's pretty weird. Yeah, and yeah. you can feed people to alligators and like, oh drop cars cool. on them and yeah. WWE Creative had a lot of hand in this game I see <laughs> <laughs> Well that was <laughs> I mean not to make this a wrestling theme but that was kind of a thing where people were like oh they're having a swamp match to promote this Battlegrounds game aren't they Oh uh, yeah yeah <laughs> I could see it I could see it <laughs> But yeah, but uh, yeah, no. There's no wrestling game coming out this year, so I'm probably gonna be playing Madden for the most part until I get a PS5. So fair enough, fair enough. We shall wait for that. Unfortunately, uh, Tanner, what are you playing right now? Um, well, m- mine's not gonna be nearly as exciting as Mike's, um, but uh, <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll share. I'll be happy to share. Uh, so, okay. l- like Mike, I, I I tend to buy uh, FIFA uh, on, on an annual basis here, um, um, which is fun. I mean, that's fine. I'm waiting on the on FIFA 21, absolutely. So, yeah. in the meantime, I'm still playing uh, FIFA 20. Um, but uh, thank you to my father-in-law. He has shown me farm simulator. So I've been, you know, working on the farm. I've been growing some crops. You know, been selling them out to the, the local grocery stores, trying to make yeah, a little yeah. bit of money to help support myself and my, my family. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. Your dog. There's dog. nothing more I, lo- I love in my video games than working. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, um, I, I was actually having the same exact conversation with my wife uh, last night because she's playing a, a mobile game where she's like a waitress or like a, like a chef of some sort. And she was mm. like, she's like, oh, my gosh, I'm burning the, the, the food. I'm burning the cake. And, and she's like, the customer is going to be mad. And I'm like, why are you stressing? Like, this, it's is, okay. a, this is a this is a, a mobile game, you know, yeah. um, but here I am like. You know, oh man, this corn ain't gonna grow. If my corn ain't gonna grow, I'm not gonna be able to to, to make it in time for for harvesting and to, to sell mm-hmm. it off. You know, so these are real world problems. These are very real world problems. Mm-hmm. You know, um, cows are it, gonna die. Yeah, the I mean, cows any, are gonna die. People yeah, need to eat. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's it's not gonna make it to the silo in time. Like, yeah, mm. these are these are great problems to have. Um, and and I'm really kind of um, you know, exploring this this dream that I've never had about being a farmer. Um, so mm. um, yeah, uh, farmer farm simulator, uh, ladies and gentlemen. It's it's actually truthfully, it is a lot of fun if you if you kind of like outside the box kind of stuff. Yeah, I mean, I, I personally really love Tycoon games. Uh, I, I'm laughing just because it's funny, and I, I wouldn't expect you to play a game like that. But yeah. Yeah. I've heard really good things about that game. I, I've thought about getting it, uh, you know, here and there. I just never pulled the trigger on it. But yeah. um, so what, what's your, uh, what, what's like your best performing crop? Yeah, you know, uh, got, some, got some soybeans, you know, some, some wheat, you know, yeah. 
yeah, some some stuff like that. Steven's obviously distracted. Um, but yeah, uh, I've got some some soybeans and some wheat and some corn. <laughs> and that's that's what I've got. Yeah, soybeans, wheat, and corn. I like yeah, it. I yeah. like you, it. You you want to you want to have some some high powered crops. You want you want to plan your croppage uh, mm. strategically. Uh, you know, of course. Yeah. So can't throw your crops around willy nilly. No, you can't. And and I mean, and you got to sell stuff to get to get like your equipment, like and, and make your make your harvesting more efficient. Yeah, you, you, there's a lot of planning that goes in here. Um, you know, but yeah, it's a lot of fun, man. We're really pulling in that farming audience. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> welcome mm-hmm. welcome everyone uh, yeah that target demo <laughs> <laughs> no that's cool though so fifa and and farming simulator farm simulator that's, that's a nice uh that's a nice little pair there like, i mean because you remember back in the day when people were playing farmville it's like oh yeah same, yeah same, same deal i i get but it. like way better yeah, yeah. Like I can't judge. Yeah, it's it's first yeah. person. You can make it first or you know first person, and you can like be there, like in the there tractor. There was a game. There was a it's game insane. recently. Uh, Sundew Valley or something. Or... Yeah, uh, yeah. Stardew Valley. Stardew Valley. Yeah. Everybody, was, it was into that game. I, I, it wasn't for me. I'm not. I, I mean, whatever. You know, people people play what they want to play. Like I can't stand Call of Duty, and everybody plays that. Hmm. So True. you know, to each his own. Yeah, whatever, yeah. whatever floats a boat. Yeah, yeah, a boat, a any boat. boat, really. I mean, he might have to worry about that in his farm one day. It's true. <laughs> yeah. It's true. I mean, that's why that's why I bought the boat. That's that's part of the equipment. Um, no, but oh, what's, what's 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 fun is like I think you can. Uh, there's two different places where you can actually start your farm. I think you can start it like somewhere. I think it's like in the in the northwest. I, I want to say maybe uh, it's somewhere here in the U.S. Right, and the other place that you can start your farm is in Germany. Uh, so you know, ah, uh, yeah. So you got two different locations. Yeah, Deutschland, yeah. Uh, <laughs> German farm. It's pretty cool. Yeah, I like yeah. it. Did um, Did you start Germany? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. So nice. My, I'm I'm a, I'm a German farmer. Yeah. Yeah, German cows yeah. and. <laughs> And all yeah. that. I think they're the same, Mo. really. Yeah. Prob- probably, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mo. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty sure all their cows sound the same, too, but... Maybe. Yeah, I would think have, so. They might have accents. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. I don't, I don't know. Do, do foreign animals have accents? That's possible. It, it's like the it's like moo, but the U with an umlaut. Well, it's, it's got an umlau. Yeah. It's got an umlau yeah. on the O. Like 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 yeah. Motorhead. Motorhead had the umlau on the O. It's yeah. like moo yeah. with multiple umlaus. Yeah. Oh yes. man. Um, okay. Steven, what have We're you? We're kind of getting playing? a little off the rails here. <laughs> yeah. Um. I, so I've actually been playing FIFA as well. Uh, FIFA mm-hmm. 20. I, I got EA Play. Uh, only 4.99 a month. It's not bad. Oh. It's not bad. So I've been playing FIFA 20. Uh, took Brighton to to the Premier League Championship. So that was fun. I, I there was one game where I played Liverpool and the score was like six one. It's like this is dumb. It, this is so dumb. Like six one you were losing or six one you were winning. Six one I was winning. So I actually oh. bumped the difficulty up because I was like, this is gonna... literally not possible in real life. I was gonna so. say. Like, cause like with Madden, like I remember a few years ago, me and my friends tried to do like an online franchise mode, right? And they they were bad at it, so mm. they want so they wanted to play on rookie or pro, and I was like, you want you want me to play on pro? It's gonna be like a hundred and one to nothing, right? Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. I was like, I'm I'm switching it to all pro or all Madden for me because I mm. want to have fun. I don't right, want right. I don't want to just score seven touchdowns in one quarter, like. You know, that's not fun. That's not fun. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, I understand. So yeah, I, I was I was <laughs> sitting because they they do the thing where like you go through the tutorial and then they they recommend you a, a difficulty level based on like how you played during the tutorial. And so I got put on amateur because I I've never played FIFA before. Uh, but after going through the seasons and everything, I'm slowly working my way up through the difficulties and I'm having a lot of fun with it. So, uh, yeah. FIFA 20 is pretty good. I, I also since I got EA Play, uh, I'm playing Need for Speed Heat as well. Uh, the the newest Need for Speed, that one is really really good. Honestly, the the story is really good. Surprisingly, it's not like a cringy like racing story like like it normally is. It's it's actually pretty good. Um, and then they they have this system of day and night where 
um, through the day, you you like increase your your money through legal street races, and then at night you're doing street races and increasing your reputation to get like more parts and upgrade your crew and things like that. Mm-hmm. So uh, I, I just started playing that one. I, I've only put like four or five hours into it. Nothing much uh, at all, but I'm having a lot of fun with it. So good, pretty good. Yeah, no, that's nice. awesome. Um, yeah, no, that's that's all good stuff here as far as uh, what we've been playing. Um, yeah. Yes, indeed. Mm. Indeed. So now to the meat of the matter. This this is the, the big one for the show. We're going to talk about uh, the PS5 and the Xbox Series X. So mm. I know mm-hmm. I'm excited, personally. Yeah. I've been trying to get this pre-order like my life depends on it. You have no idea. I've been, waking, <laughs> I, I, I've been like waking up at like 10 a.m. Like, oh, is there something available at Target? No. Best Buy? No. GameStop? No. Even yeah. they're even selling the PS5 at B and H. B and yeah. H is a, B and H is a camera store. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. B and H has it. Uh, Barnes and Noble ha- has pre-orders set up that that you can get it from there. It's, Sam's Club. It's hmm. so crazy. Yeah. Like. Maybe you wouldn't have a pre-order shortage if you limit it to like a few retailers instead of like, you know, yeah. Yeah. pre-order a PS5 at AutoZone, you know. <laughs> but <laughs> I mean, I mean that's kind of a stretch. Like, I don't think I'm gonna get my PS5 at 1-800 Flowers, but you know. Let me tell you, Mike. Mm-hmm. If 1-800 Flowers has a pre-order, I'm getting it because I can't get it anywhere else right now, apparently. <laughs> so yeah, this is true. <laughs> So uh, I know we're we're all excited about about the PS5. I'm yes. curious though, Xbox Series X slash Series S. Either of y'all interested in that? Tanner, go. You go. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I'm 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 somewhat uh, uh, somewhat excited, somewhat optimistic about it. You know, it's supposed to be the most powerful console of all time, so they say. True. Um, so I, I I would like to see what they do with the console. Um, mm-hmm. I, I have been a PlayStation guy. I will still get the PlayStation 5. That's absolutely 100%. Um, but for full transparency purposes, ladies and gentlemen, I do not uh, buy or pre-order any console. I usually wait about a year until it uh, goes on sale or is marked down or until I know for sure that all the bugs are out. So, I mean, I've just been that oh, way for, for phones, for gaming consoles, that all that sense. stuff. I, I, I didn't get a PS4 until the first year. After mm-hmm. the first year, so. but mm-hmm. that was also because I didn't have the money for it. So, yeah. right, right. I mean, that's a, that's a big reason but, uh, too. Yeah. Yeah, but um, yeah, I I've been trying because I I just, it, it, but also I'm not gonna lose sleep if I don't get a pre-order because I'm still gonna get one. It's mm-hmm. not like I it's not like I can't get one after November twelfth. Mm-hmm. So you know, um, but yeah, I, as far as like Xbox, like. I've never really, I have never really been excited for an Xbox because I never really wanted an Xbox. I've always been a PlayStation person. Mm-hmm. I had the, I had the original Xbox and that was it. Mm-hmm. And I don't even know why I wanted it to be honest. I was just like, let me give it a shot and see what happens because I've always been a PlayStation slash Nintendo person. Mm. And I never was like, oh, Microsoft is going into gaming. I don't know. Uh, all right. And then yeah. I got the the first Xbox, and I was like, I don't like any of your exclusives, so I don't need you. <laughs> yeah. Well, Stephen, you know, Stephen, what is what is Microsoft putting out as far as like their uh, like like their launch like their launch titles and stuff like that? That way, so like you know, maybe we can give the listener here maybe an educated uh you know um, glimpse into what they could expect if they are planning on getting a a, a pre order of an Xbox. Yeah. yeah. So uh, uh, Microsoft's kind of doing something a little bit different. They're they're not really putting the same focus on uh, uh, things like exclusives uh, like Sony is. Mm-hmm. So uh, Xbox Series X lineup, there's actually not that many exclusives on there. There's a lot of third-party games, uh, okay. which, which is fine. It's not really a problem. Yeah. But yeah. Um, these are the these are the Series X games that you can buy on launch day. Uh, okay. So we have first up Assassin's Creed Valhalla, which I'm super pumped for that that might be my my number one game this year that i'm looking forward to it's either this or or cyberpunk uh 2077 so okay uh, pretty excited about this one um watchdogs legion is going to be coming out as well uh have, have y'all played watchdogs i love watchdog series 
Yeah, Watch Dogs is great. Good. Uh, I will honestly say, though, like, I was a little disappointed with 2 because the story was really? very short. The story was very short. I, I do agree with that. Uh, I, I remember even saying when I first played Watch Dogs 2 that, like, I could have handled the story being, like, twice as long. Like, the, the gameplay yeah. was so good, but it just, it's like, there's a rising action climax and it's over. And, and, yep. and then you're kind of just left wanting more, you That's know? It. I mean, the thing with this new one, this new one is you you get to play as, like, numerous people. You're right. Not, you're not playing as, like, one character. You're playing as different people with different skills. Mm hmm Which and... I'm a little confused how that's going to actually fit into the story, honestly. Well, they're, I mean, they're all going to probably be involved in, uh, what's the name of that group that they have? Um, oh. Uh, the hacker group. I can't remember the name. I can never uh, remember. Yeah, I, I can never remember the name. I would have to look it up, but yeah, yeah, they they have like the group that everybody's affiliated with that Aiden mm. Pierce. I I remember the main guy from the first one, Aiden Pierce, who's actually right. going to be in this one. I don't know. Oh, how. that's cool. Yeah, yeah, he's gonna be in it. Uh, he actually made a cameo in the second one where you did a mission where you had to save him, but mm. um, but I think he is going to be playable again in the third one, but obviously not as the only playable character. Right, right. But hey, I just, well, that sounds cool. Yeah, I just love the uh, the idea of that game, like, um, like using hacking as a vigilante tool mm -hmm. is really is really cool to me. Well, Watch Dogs, like as a franchise, you you know, obviously they were the original Watch Dogs was, was a launch title for for this past generation, and it was really the first game to to bring in like heavy environmental effects that that you're able to control like uh, obviously there's been games like god of war that that's done like big environmental set pieces and things like that but yeah. Watch Dogs is really the first one where it's like hey i'm driving down the street and a cop is chasing me and now i'm gonna hit the barriers up behind me and make them crash like it's i don't know it, yeah, it's one of the or, first games to do it that well yeah, and that or polished like change the street light and then like right traffic crashes into the cop or something mm -hmm. like, you know like it, it it's it's very fun and it's very uh i mean especially the first one i love the first one so yeah. much uh so that's why i'm very excited about this one but, hey it, it looks to be really good we'll, we will have to wait and see uh like i said this is a launch title for xbox series x you'll be able to get it on november 10th uh whenever the x and the s release simultaneously uh, we also have some some more launch games here. Dirt Five. Uh, it's uh, not a big cross? fan of Dirt personally. Uh, no, it's actually like a like a racing like rally car type oh, game. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Um, I I've never been a fan of off road racing in games. Uh, it's I don't know. It's just not my thing personally. I mean, you would think that like especially for Xbox where they they have Forza, right? Like if you're playing Forza, why do you want to play this? You know. I mean, yeah. Yeah, like what 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 does this have that Forza doesn't have? You know. Yeah. Honestly, uh, we we also have Yakuza Seven, like a dragon. Uh, uh, not is that is that like a like uh, a like a play on the Madonna song, like a dragon? Yeah, like, like a. Dragon. I was gonna say, like, did they like? Is it supposed to be like dance like a dragon? Like scorched for the very first time. <laughs> there you go. Tanner gets it. Yeah. Tanner gets it. it. Yeah. I, I, I produced that game, so I I should. Not. Oh, okay. No, okay. I'm just I'm just kidding. Oh, I did not make that game. No, don't don't believe me. Don't listen to me, folks. I did not make that game. Uh, uh, let's see. We also have a uh, Tetris Effect connected. Um, Tetris. Tetris. Sweet. Wow. I mean, if you, uh, I mean Microsoft. If you... <laughs> Go ahead, Mike. I'm sorry. I was just gonna say, if you have a Switch, just play Tetris 99. Yeah, it's, it sounds 100%. like some. Microsoft is really rolling out the big bucks for these uh, these titles here. Yeah, yeah. We also have uh, Gears Tactics, which is a uh, uh, basically just a strategy game, top down version of Gears of War. Mm. Uh, if you guys are familiar with that franchise, not a big Gears of War fan. I do like strategy games though, and the, this kind of seems to be like a cross between like uh, I don't know, almost like XCOM and, and Gears of War. So yeah, see good. that's. That's where like the like Xbox exclusive thing comes into play for me. Like, not a fan of Gears of War, not a fan of Halo, mm -hmm. not a, not a fan of you know, because all the Xbox exclusive games kind of just feel the same and play the same. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's and I'm. I mean, people are gonna hate me right right off the gate, but I hate first person shooters. Can't mm. stand. Them. Well, Can't I, stand them. Well, I I think that 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 raises They're a good different point. Folks, man. Yeah, I think that raises a good point about what um maybe maybe what kind of gamer you are is gonna dictate whether you buy the Xbox or the PlayStation Five first, whichever one. Because oh, if you yeah, if you if you're a, a fan of first person shooters, then obviously it sounds like the, the Xbox is gonna be the right path for you to go on. But uh, I think if you're looking for a more diverse lineup uh, to start with, then then maybe give the PS Five a look here. And I think Steven, do mm-hmm. you have do you have some some PlayStation Five launch titles? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We certainly do. Um, a, a lot of these games uh, look really, really good. I'm, I'm excited for a lot of them. So we'll go ahead and uh, come down this list here. So the big one that they're that they're trying to push this year is uh, the semi quasi expansion for Spider Man, but not an expansion. But it's not a DLC. But it's uh, it's kind of confusing. It's uh, a continuation hmm. that is the size of. A smaller game so it's right. like like with the uncharted series right mm-hmm. they they did a uh they did a spin-off one the name is escaping me but they did uncharted a legacy one. yeah that's the one mm-hmm. where it was like half the size mm-hmm. basically it's that it's you're 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 picking up from where the last one left off where miles has powers now mm-hmm. and, and is a spider-man and Peter is off doing something else. Something. And and then there will be another full length game where you go back as Peter in the future. Oh, right on. Okay. Okay. And probably also include Miles because. Yeah, why? I would think. Yeah. Why would you take him out? Because <laughs> they'll probably because they'll probably go the Batman Arkham route where you have like ninety percent of the game you're playing as Peter Parker, mm-hmm. and like the other ten you're playing as Miles. Right, right. Um, which is fine, because I love... I mean, I have never been disappointed by a Spider-Man video game. Me neither. Uh, other than the ones that are not open world. Because mm. the ones that are not open world just don't feel like a Spider-Man game. Like, Yeah, I mean, um, part of it is being able to, you know, swing around it and, and yeah, explore New like, York. If you're not able to do that, it's like, am I really Spider-Man? On PS3, they had a couple of chapter-based Spider-Man games that just didn't work for me like yeah they were they were cool concepts like they had that one shattered dimensions which i played mm-hmm. all the way through and actually didn't hate but it's not a spider-man game it's like mm. you're playing as four different spider-men in four different realms mm-hmm. and it's all chapter based that's that's not a spider-man game to me right mm. right i i definitely did enjoy that game but i almost would have enjoyed it more as like a comic book or as a movie than than a game itself, really. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Like I I didn't need to play Spider Man twenty ninety nine because right. I don't care about Spider Man twenty ninety nine. Right. Spider Man twenty ninety nine is boring. Mm. It's just I Spider- hear you. It's just Spider Man in the future, and Ooh. Doc Ock is, and Doc Ock is a woman now. Right. Like, I don't I don't care. Yeah. But, <laughs> Um, but yeah, but yeah. Th- this one looks to be really good. Uh, yeah. So Spider-Man Miles Morales, that will be a launch title uh, for the PS5. Uh, it also, if you buy the Ultimate Edition of the game, you do get the PS5 version of the original... Uh, I don't want to say original, because there's been like 30 games before well, it, but the, the most recent the, Spider-Man game on uh, PS4. The original oh, okay. Insomniac game. Right, the original Insomniac one, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's, but that's they changed... Cool. At- that's actually a thing that uh, people are talking about because they changed the voice actor. They changed so they... the the face actor too. Yeah, it's and weird. I I honestly don't care. Mm-hmm. Um, I think people are making a bigger deal out of it for I guess because he looks too much like Tom Holland now. Right, right. Um, which is fine because Tom Holland actually looks like Peter Parker. Is, yes, that's true. So that like. I I am a huge Spider-Man fan. I love these open world games. I'm I'm gonna get it regardless. But if this game is seventy dollars, like the original game cannot be seventy dollars. If the ultimate edition is seventy dollars, that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Because this is not a full length game. So you shouldn't be charging me full length prices. Yeah. Very true. Like, and that is a thing that Sony does have a problem with, and that is one of the things that I 
gripe about with them. Like, they make certain games that are clearly a $20 game, and it still costs $60. Right, and right. That's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. No, I completely agree. Yeah. Have they announced how much the standard edition of this game will be? I think they said 50 I could be wrong. I would have to double check that. I think they said oh. 50 But, um, yeah. Okay. So a little bit discounted. Yeah, uh, okay, we'll see. Gotcha. But either way, I well, think it's going to be We fun. will have to wait and see on that one. I love that. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I agree. Let, let me. I just want to add that I love that they kind of went down like an Batman Arkham route with Spider-Man games. I feel like that's kind of the way that the Spider-Man game should have been played. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, so I actually really hope that this is a good setup for the next full-length game. Yeah, definitely. I, I mean, I don't see why it wouldn't be. I, I mean, uh, Sony has now purchased Insomniac, and uh, they're—I mean—they're going to be making you know Spider-Man and Ratchet and Clank for for this foreseeable future. So I, I can only assume that they kind of had the, this like really grand idea, uh, but then Sony was kind of like, "Hey, so we're going to buy you, but we need something for the PS5." So. Go ahead and make the the Spider Man game, that this this well, smaller Miles Morales game, well, and then we'll give you also, all the money you need to make the new one. Also, we're talking about Sony, who will not let go of Spider Man to save their life, even in true. movies. Mm -hmm. So it's That's like, very true. Sony is riding the coattails of Spider Man like you wouldn't believe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Absolutely, I, so... I don't think they'll. I, I don't think they'll do it anything other than justice. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, yeah, so we got Spider-Man Miles Morales. Uh, this next one is Astro's Playroom. Uh, the, it's basically a tech demo for, for the PS5 and, and everything that it can do, everything that the controller can do. Uh, and this does come preloaded on all PS5s, which is cool, so you can play this while, while your other launch games are downloading. I believe they had something similar hmm. like this on the PS4. I they did. I, I've never been a, yeah. gotten around to playing it. I've heard really, yeah. really good things, though. Yeah, I don't remember what it was called either, but it was yeah something very similar. Yeah, it, it was Astro something. Cause I yeah. I think that the little robot that's right here is named Astro. Yeah. So yeah, it was like Player Room or something. Playroom, uh, something like that. I don't remember what it was. Called. Oh yeah, yeah. It does just say the Playroom. Yeah. Yep. Hmm. Yep. That's right on. Cool. Well, yeah. So uh, it it looks kind of cool. Just a little cutesy little game to to show you what the PS5 is capable of doing. Um, another cutesy little game is Sackboy A Big Adventure. I don't know if uh, either of y'all have ever played Little Big Planet or any of the shoot-offs from that, but I actually really, really enjoyed those games, so I'm pretty excited for this one. I just I'm, watched I, a, yeah. a YouTube video recently. Sorry, Tanner. No, you're uh, good. Um, people actually... I, I, I never play Little Big Planet, but I remember people were very, very upset that there was, like, no PS4 title. Mm -hmm. and And, like... Uh, I, you know, I get it. It's, it's like a, it's a cute little platformer. That's mm -hmm. what it is. It's a cute little platformer where you can yeah. sometimes build things. Mm -hmm. And it, yeah, I mean, it has its audience and, you know, PS, like, it's one of those things that PlayStation's going to latch on to. It's like, this is ours and we're going to make it work and people are going to love it. Yeah. I, I mean, L Little Big Planet's always been one of those games where it's, it's, cool you know it, it's not a, a fantastic game or anything but what what's fun is uh you know i live with my nephew and and he's starting to get into games also so it's it's cool to have a game that i can just be playing and then just hand him a controller and he can jump in and play with play with me um this one is developed by the people that made little big planet 3 which is uh, sumo digital instead of media molecule which made uh one and two and dreams if y'all have heard of that one um wasn't a huge fan of Little Big Planet 3. So with them making this one, it worries me a tiny bit, but they're switching to a like 3D open world like platformer kind of thing instead of the 2D uh, side scrolling. So at, at any rate it's going to be a little bit different either way. So yeah. Uh, and then going further down the list, again we have Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Um the the Xbox version will be releasing on the 10th alongside the Xbox whereas the PS5 version will be releasing on the 12th alongside the PS5 standard stuff. Uh Demon's Souls as well uh, will be coming out. I'm not a huge fan of uh 
these kind of games. They're just, look, I'm going to be perfectly honest with y'all. I suck at these games. And, and uh, they're, they're made to be very hard. And uh, like, like they are. Souls, like Dark yeah. Souls and Bloodborne. Right. And... Mm-hmm. It's, yeah, I, I'm just not very good at them. I, I just suck. I, I get like yeah, two hours I, in, and I'm just like I've died like 90 times already. I never heard like I mean I've heard a lot about those games. Like I never got my hands on those games just because I just had no interest. I played Sekiro, and beat oh yeah it. yeah, I beat Sekiro, and I and a friend of mine was so bad at it that he rage quit, and mm. kept told kept telling me that he was gonna go back to it. And every single time he he tells me that he's bored, I was like, you know, you could play Sekiro, and he's like, yeah, I'm not gonna do that. And I, was like, <laughs> and, and, I and I'll tell him like, why not? You said you would go back to it at one point, and he's like, yeah, I'm not gonna do that. I was like, why not? Is it because you suck at it? He's like, he's like, yes, it's because yep. I suck at it. <laughs> and he's like, go play Dark Souls three, and then come talk to me. I was like, I don't have to. I beat Sekiro, and you quit it. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, my my roommate's really into these games. He he's played all all the Dark Souls, Demon Souls. He, he's played uh, you know Bloodborne and all these games. Um, they're just not for me. But you know, yeah. it, it is what it is. Uh, but that that is a remake of, of the original game that came out in what? What do you think, Mike? Like two thousand eight, two thousand nine? I believe so. Yeah. Yeah, so somewhere around there. Uh, but this is like a complete overhaul remake the the game actually if you if you guys watch the the trailer that they showed at the ps5 showcase uh, a few weeks ago the game looks incredible like graphically um so that's cool well everything looks incredible it looks like you're not wrong yeah i mean <laughs> not i mean that's one thing that i hear a lot from like people who are strictly xbox people they're like oh sony's just making interactive movies and not making actual games but like uncharted was really fun because of like the puzzle aspect and like the and the interactive aspect of those puzzles and how you were able to progress in doing them Mm -hmm. like so that's kind of like i've heard that a lot from a lot of like xbox people like yeah i I mean I I can understand the argument if like that's not really what what you're in it for. If you're looking for an arcade game, awesome. I mean, there's there's hundreds and thousands of arcade games that you can play. If you're looking for a, a game that that's going to like terrify you and and you know make you feel things and and things like that, play a Naughty Dog game. You know, like I, I don't understand the whole like oh they're only making these types of games. I'm like okay, then mm. play something else. You know, I think it comes down like a lot of times. You, you like, I mean, all of us are PlayStation people, so I think a lot of times it comes down to like, are you more into the story aspect or are you more into just playing a shooter? Right, right. And that's kind of like how I feel about Xbox. If I mm-hmm. just wanted to play a shooter that has nothing interesting to say, but I'm here to just shoot people, I'll get an Xbox. Or you mm. can play it on PC. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but but yeah. So so there's a uh, Demon Soul uh, on PS5. Also the the next one. This is a I believe this is a PS5 console timed exclusive. So mm. it, it will be coming off on Xbox at some point. Uh, but right now I think it's one year. I believe. Uh, and this is Godfall. Um, it's being published by the people that make uh, Borderlands Three. By by Gearbox, I'm not familiar with who is actually making it. Are you, Mike? I don't know. Actually, I'd have to look into that. I yeah, I'm I'm not too sure, but it, it seems to kind of be a cross between um, Borderlands with with the kind of looter shooter aspect, where you're constantly changing. Uh, you know, you're constantly picking up guns that increase your level and in, in increasing your equipment and things like that. Um, and, and that's really the game is like getting loot. Uh, just constantly, but it also kind of combines that with uh, maybe like For Honor, where where it has that really like uh, melee hand to hand combat kind of thing. Um, so it it seems really cool. It almost seems like a melee uh, version of, of Borderlands in a way, but it has this really like high fantasy um, 
uh, like scenery and and uh, setting and everything like that. So it, it seems pretty cool. I, I have purposefully not seen a lot about it just because I, I want to be surprised when, whenever it, it finally comes out. Hmm. It's always good to be surprised. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't want to spoil everything for myself, you know? Mm -hmm. I, I've already watched so many videos on Assassin's Creed Valhalla when I really shouldn't. I should just wait and I, be surprised. As far as I could tell, I think the developer of Godfall uh, is Counterplay Games, and I don't think they have a lot of titles. Gotcha. Counterplay doesn't even have their own Wikipedia page. So oh, snap. I'm, I'm going to say that they're new, and this might be their first game. Hmm, right on. Well, I, 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 I mean, yeah, more power to them, I guess. If Gearbox has has decided to back this development team, then then uh, I mean, I have faith in them, you know. Yeah, I mean, I see what happens. It looks uh, interesting. Yeah, uh, and then just wrapping up the list here, we have Watch Dogs Legion once again, Dirt Five once again, uh, Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. I don't know if we mentioned that on the Xbox uh, show. Uh, side of things but that will also of course be launching on xbox no i just mentioned my hatred for call of duty <laughs> i'm not the biggest fan either personally i don't, I don't know I, don't, I mean i just don't get it i i i mean as far as like i mean i again i play madden a lot mm -hmm. and that that is it that does end up being like the same game almost every year but call of duty is just going online shooting people and screaming at them that's Call of Duty. Yeah. <laughs> See, my, my problem with Call of Duty is, like, it, if you like it, cool. Like, th like that's fine. But there, there's so many better first-person shooters. And, and Mike, I, I know you said you're, you're not a big fan of first-person shooters, but that's one of my favorite genres. And it's like, if, if you want to play a first-person shooter game, I'll name you 50 that you can play before Call of Duty. It, but still, day year after year... Call of Duty is is the biggest seller, and I just don't I mean, understand it. Everybody that I've heard from says that like, um, what's that other one? Uh, Battle uh, Battlegrounds. Battlegrounds. <laughs> well, that's uh, well, that's PUBG. I know. PUBG. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm just messing. No, well, PUBG is fun is fine, but uh, no, the other one, um, it does start Battlefield. With B, like, that's the one. Mm. Everybody tends to say that one is better. And it just comes down to if you like realism with Battlefield or arcade yeah. with Call of Duty. Hmm. Yeah, well, I mean, like I said, I, I, I mean, for me, it's always been more about story-based games and, mm -hmm. you know, like, just doing more. Like, I just can't get behind, like, playing eight hours of just shooting people. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, hey, I hear you. I hear you. Uh, but we are not free this year. Another Call of Duty is in the books, of course, because it will, and it will be that until the end of time, yeah. really. <laughs> they're, they're just going to release until it's Call of Duty, like, 97 or something. Yeah, a friend of mine presented a... Um, he made a good point, and he was like, you know, Call of Duty... And I actually agreed. I said, Call of Duty should just take a break. Yes. And, like, yes. Do, some, do something different. And make it interesting mm -hmm. and like every year they try to pull you in with like a story mode that stars an actor like and that's it right and it's like i mean they the one year they had what was it kevin spacey and then yeah that didn't age well that didn't age well yeah and i remember playing another... that one that one was awful that one was yeah. particularly bad and then there was, and then the thing that they do every single year, because they think that this is going to matter to you, is they put out an ad where a basketball player is playing the game with an actor. Yeah, the the only thing that about like Call of Duty does this thing where they have people like they have basketball players and and movie stars just playing the game, and that's how they try to sell you on playing Call of Duty. Now it's like. You know, like I don't, I'm not gonna get Call of Duty just because I might play Damian Lillard. You know, right, right. right. It, it's just kind of dumb. Like, it, I understand it because it's the biggest video game, and so they they want to go for like the mass appeal thing. But like, how is this? How is this game different? How does it play? That's what I care about. Like, I don't care about yeah. who's playing it. You know. Yeah, exactly. It, it's the biggest game out there. Everyone's playing it. I get it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, but uh, let's go ahead and bring it home here. Uh, we have uh, another game launch title, Destruction All-Stars. This is kind of like a demolition derby type game. It, it takes place in, in a, a really large uh, arena with, with like battle cars and things. But you can actually, what's kind of cool is uh, if your car gets destroyed, you actually jump out of your car and then there's like these obstacle races that you can do. Uh, that, that like give you bonus points and then you can steal other people's cars and then get back into the derby. So it, it seems kind of cool. Um, they are sticking with a $59.99 price tag on it. So we'll see if, if that's actually worth it. It seems like a really like uh, just kind of art, like arcadey game to me. I don't know if it's really worth the full 60 bucks, but it does seem cool. Well, what do you guys think? It seems kind of twisted metal-ish. Yeah, mm. yeah. Like, um, I mean... I probably won't get it, but it probably looks interesting. Yeah, I, I mean, if uh, if I'm stuck in the loop of, uh, you know, just not having any games to play on PS5, then yeah, I'll probably pick it up. It does seem cool, but that being said, I'll probably catch it on a sale. So, yeah. Uh, and then rounding off the list here, we have Devil May Cry 5 Special Edition. This is uh, the remaster from the, the last game, Devil May Cry uh, 5 looks really good just like all the other games on this list the graphics are really really good on it uh devil may cry not my cup of tea but i know a lot of people really dig it so you can grab that on release date as well and then rounding out the list everyone's favorite game fortnite <laughs> uh, fortnite will be making an appearance on ps5 as well to the shock of literally no one well there you go and yeah so <laughs> so that's your ps5 and your xbox series x launch lineups uh they, they both look good, definitely. Uh, obviously, Xbox has a lot of the third-party stuff on there. Um, Sony is is definitely sticking with the same thing they've been doing with the PS4. They have the third parties, for sure, but they're really pushing those first-party games, which, I mean, that's what that's what keeps making me come back to PlayStation. So uh, I'm glad that they're they're continuing that with this next generation. So uh, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, I'm, I'm Like I said, I'm trying to get that ps5 pre-order uh doesn't look like it's gonna happen i'll probably i don't know i might brave the crowds at black friday who knows uh, God. yeah <laughs> just don't get trampled dude i know i know <laughs> if i do it's gonna be a get in get out scenario like <laughs> i'm just i'm gonna run towards the ps5s that's it yeah that's all i need that's all i need well i think everybody's gonna be doing that <laughs> Speaking, Unfortunately, yeah. speaking of preventing to get trampled, Mike <laughs> Mike has promised uh, here to to at the end of the show uh, give us a, um, a a a maybe a sneak peek or a preview uh, of Avengers. Um, he promised that he would only disappoint me, uh, so I'm ready uh, for for his <laughs> his preview review. M Mike, you got some some news on Avengers? Uh, well. By now, I'm sure everybody who wanted to play Avengers has played it by now. Um, it's been out for like a month already. Mm. But um, my biggest gripe with the game is that the story mode is very short. And it just turns into a looting game and a mm. Uh, mm. playing a lot of the same stages just to collect stuff game mm -hmm. um most of the story is just introducing you to the characters and then fighting the the main villain and then you go into the post game where you have to play multiplayer stuff mm. and that's you where lost me there and that's where it loses me mm -hmm. because i finished the story and i'm literally like i'm playing the game and I'm 95% done with the story, and Captain America hasn't shown up yet. And then you get to the story mode, and the story is actually very interesting. Mm. It's just that they turn this game into a game that they obviously they wanted to have some kind of longevity because they basically made it into Destiny Marvel. Mm. Great. That's, Great. That's that's what it is. It's Destiny yeah. Marvel. And 
Yeah, I, I mean, when you had when you had talked about like the basically like repeating challenges to to get collectibles and stuff, that reminds me a lot of Ultimate Alliance Three. If y'all had have played that one, uh, I was a huge fan of the the original Ultimate Alliances, but then Three came out and the the story is extremely short, and then the the whole end game is replaying challenges and and things yeah. to get collectibles. It kind of sounds like it's a similar thing See, here. The thing that got me excited about the game was because they they sold us on the story and mm -hmm. they sold us on like oh this is you've never seen the avengers like this before and you're gonna love this game you're gonna want to play it forever and the thing that they didn't tell us was that the story mode is literally finished you can finish the story mode in basically a day damn, damn. and then you just have to go into the post game a lot of looting and a lot of doing the same challenges in the same setting over and over and over again mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that is not the game that i was expecting i was expecting something not i wasn't expecting open world because you're playing five six different characters they're adding people they're adding spider-man they're adding hawkeye they're adding uh kate bishop who's just another hawkeye um and i don't know if they're adding to the story all i know is that they're adding more characters and they're probably just adding more loot missions yeah i was gonna say adding, more adding, ways to get loot <laughs> yeah adding more loot missions adding more ways to upgrade things and like that's just that's the game after you beat the story, it's literally just doing all the missions and upgrading things and getting other characters and upgrading them. And that's it. Mm -hmm. There's there's no uh, substance to the post-game. It's literally just, like I said, it's Marvel Destiny. Mm -hmm. And that isn't the game that I was hoping for. I was hoping for like a chapter-based story based game that was like a long like i was hoping for at least like a 30 hour story mode or something mm -hmm. you know mm. like yeah I, I mean honestly if you're gonna make the the post game that shallow then the story mode needs to be longer you know it, yeah. I, it, I don't need like a hundred hour post game but if you give me a really meaty uh you know main storyline then that's fine but yeah. if both parts are shallow why would i come back you know yeah exactly and I hear you. like and like an argument that i heard and kind of agree with is like this game is a generation behind mm. like you made this game in the hopes that people would want to continue to play it and move over to ps5 and continue to play it when this feels like a ps3 game that just came onto ps4 damn so this is like, feels like a remaster. Yeah. It, it feels like, you you know, all you want me to do is loot and buy things and microtransactions, and that's it. Oh, that's... so there are microtransactions. Oh, 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 of course there is. Yeah. Of course. Of course there is. There's, yeah. cost, you know, costumes that you can only get by paying for them. Mm -hmm. And there's certain upgrades that you can only get by paying for them. And... Like, like I said, that is not the game that I feel like I was promised. Mm -hmm. I, was, I was promised a different Avengers game. And yes, it is a different Avengers game because there's never been an Avengers game with looting before. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. but that's that's not my Avengers game. That's yeah, not... the, the, the thing that confuses me about the looting aspect is like Captain America's shield is made out of vibranium. Like what? Yeah. What? What are you gonna get that's gonna upgrade that? You know, like. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it's not that complex. It's, oh, I see. It's just like making it stronger, basically. Oh, okay. Just like stats. It's, yeah, yeah. It's just increasing, okay. increasing stats. It's increasing your defense, increasing mm. your, you know, your uh, attack level. Okay. There's, you know, certain challenges that you can only do at level fifty. Mm. There's certain challenges, or or you're recommended to be at mm -hmm. level 50 to do this challenge. Or there's some challenges you have to be up at like a level 100. And it's like, you, you just want me to play the same thing over and over and over again just so that I can level up high enough to unlock a loot item? Mm -hmm. And then continue to do that? 
Yeah, that that sounds so much like Ultimate Alliance three, honestly. And, and yeah, uh, Ultimate Alliance three was fun, but like, there's nothing to do unless yeah. I wanted to do the same thing and, over. Like I'm playing the game, and I was like, wait a minute, the story is almost over, and mm. this was like after week one, like because I didn't right. try, you know, I didn't try to beat it all in one in one day, but I was like, wait a minute, so they. They just want me to finish the story mode in one day and then just do all the post game. And that's it. And that's wow. that's that's not exciting. Yeah, yeah. I mean that's, it like you said, that certainly does sound like destiny. Yeah, that, that's exactly <laughs> Honestly. that's exactly what it is. It's it's Marvel Destiny, and that's not the game that I was hoping for. I was hoping for and, and like I said, I wasn't hoping for like an open world Avengers game. I got enough of that with Spider Man. Spider Man can be my open world Marvel game, and I'm fine. With right, that. right. But this could have been something bigger. This could have been like a chapter based story mode where the Avengers have a lot going on. Like, sure, they put a bunch of other villains in the story mode, but the fights aren't very hard. Mm. You know? It's just not satisfying. Like, no, there's nothing about the game that is like, oh, I'll play this again because they don't even want you to play it again. They want you to beat the story mode once and then just play looting for a hundred hours. Yeah, that's that's not an Avengers game to me. No, I, I I tend to agree with you. That doesn't really sound like a game that I would see myself coming back to a lot, honestly. Yeah, hmm. so unfortunately, cool. Tanner is probably going to cry now, and <laughs> <laughs> I might. I don't know. And, like, like uh, this is. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, we'll see. I mean, it's it's to each their own. We'll see if it's good. I mean, there's plenty of people who really loved those kind of games anyway. Uh, mm -hmm. may, well, maybe I'll yeah. like it. Maybe I won't. I don't know. We'll, we'll figure it well, out. Well, that's the thing. If you love Destiny, you're gonna love this game. <laughs> I I didn't play Destiny just because of of things that I heard yeah. like like the the, mm -hmm. the the major criticism. So, uh, we'll we'll, we'll wait and yeah. see on that one. I guess Destiny wasn't um, for me either. So yeah, I, 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 when I <laughs> this game, this game is just Marvel Destiny, and that's not mm -hmm. not the see, game I signed up for. And I feel like I would probably have a, a similar um, experience with this game that I did with Destiny, where it's like, oh yeah, the gameplay's fun, like a hundred percent. The gameplay's fun, but it's short as hell. And I just run out of things to do, you know? Yep. So well, it'll probably be a pass for me, unfortunately. Well, gentlemen, it seems as though we are all out of time uh, for, mm. for this particular episode. Uh, but because we've come from all sorts of different places uh, it, and, and that we've met in a completely different realm other than video games, I think it's only appropriate that uh, if the viewers are into other things, maybe whether it's wrestling related or if it's, if it's sports related uh, or indeed for more video game related content, um, where can people out there find you? I've, I've gone ahead and taken the liberties of putting everybody's Twitter handles here on the, the screen, so you can see that. If you want to follow us on Twitter uh, individually, you can definitely do that. Just yeah, go ahead and yeah, to check it out right there. Uh, but where can more people find uh, other content for you, Mike? Well, you can go to my website. I have a website called uh, Mike JC on Wrestling, where I usually write uh about wrestling and sometimes talk about it through audio um usually very angrily because that's what <laughs> wwe does but um i understand i mean my most recent audio was literally just 100 percent complaining about the build to a pay-per-view <laughs> but um <laughs> but uh yeah you can follow me on there and you can also go to sltdwrestling.com where uh every wednesday night i do the uh the review features for uh, AW Dynamite and uh, complain a little about that show. <laughs> Good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Not WWE complaining. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's like another level, honestly. Yeah, uh, yeah and uh, just uh, continue to uh, look out for other things. I, I've been guesting on podcasts, so those will be coming out soon, I think. I did two podcasts with our friend Mags, so those are, nice. coming, out, those are coming out soon. He's a good hope. lad, that Mags. <laughs> yes. yes. So. Indeed, yeah, Ma Mags uh, is, is a great friend. Um, yes. Good uh, 
Stephen, what about you? Where can more people find your content if they want to yeah. check you out? Yeah, so you you can find me obviously on this show, uh, 3P Gamecast, every Wednesday, obviously. Uh, but you can also find me and Tanner on Mondays on Headlock Talk. That's our main show about uh, all things wrestling. Uh, like, like like Mike said, I mean, we complain about WWE a lot. Uh, we complain about AEW sometimes. We, we, Never we, about New Japan, though. We we criticize. We we criticize fairly <laughs> and, and appropriately. <laughs> Yeah, um, and yeah. You can also hear me on there complaining in Twitter form. <laughs> yes, you can. You can actually yes. find Mike there. Uh, Mike's also on that show. Um, yes. Yeah. Practically every week. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and then you can also uh, hit me up on Twitter uh, at Grudy Steven. Uh, last name Grudy G R O O D Y Steven with a P H. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, I've got I've got mm-hmm. it right there in the uh, on the screen, so you guys can definitely follow Stephen and follow oh, that's Mike. Right. Uh, you I don't can, know why I said that then. It's right uh, there. Yeah, it's right there. Right, right where Stephen's pointing. Um, <laughs> uh, of course, uh, I am Tanner. You can follow me on Twitter at Texas Gentleman, or you can check out more of my content. I think Stephen, um, Stephen said it well. You can follow us on Twitter at Headlock Talk, where you can uh, check out more pro wrestling stuff. Or if you like actual real sports, uh, you can also um, you can also check out uh, at Shooting the Sports Ish or Shooting Sports Ish rather, um, or check out the YouTube page for Shooting the Sports Ish. There, um, my good friend uh, as well as a good friend of everybody else's here, um, Mags. Mags does uh, Radio Techers with me. Uh, Radio Techers is a show about uh, uh, mostly about. Uh, football or as uh, most americans would call it soccer um you can check that out uh, where we do coverage for premier league as well as other uh footballing leagues throughout the rest of the world so yeah that's good stuff uh so make sure to follow all those shows or uh hit us up on twitter whatever you like uh we'll be happy to do that again we'll be doing more episodes of 3p gamecast uh in the future normally on wednesdays so that's all good things there um and yeah well thank you guys for for uh tuning in and choosing uh 3p gamecast uh for your video game enjoyment absolutely yeah thank you guys for listening y'all take care out there yeah all right bye-bye everybody (laughs) bye